Good morning, Circuit Riders. It is a beautiful day and we are excited to be heading down to Monterey. We are gonna do the Big Sur Pacific Coast Highway Drive. We're gonna do some John Steinbeck sites. We're gonna go to Monterey. So uh, happy to have you with us. Let's go. Our first stop today is the town of Salinas, California. It's on the way to Monterey. And we're just making a brief stop here because the National John Steinbeck Center is here. And we'll talk a little bit more about John Steinbeck later when we get to Monterey. But I, we probably won't go through the whole museum, um, but I just wanna stick my head in the lobby and see if there's anything to see there. You know, even if you're not into John Steinbeck novels, but you are into RVing, I would suggest to you to read Travels with Charlie. John Steinbeck got an old truck camper and he took his standard poodle named Charlie and they traveled all around the country. It's one of my favorite travel books. And I even have a quote from that book up in our RV. I made this with a video screenshot of Mount Katahdin that I had taken in Maine. And I put this Travels with Charlie quote over it. I gave it to Jason one year for Christmas. I love this quote because Jason is from Aroostook County in Maine. That is where our land is. It's called The County by Mainers. Um, and the there's a curious connection between people from the county and Florida. <laughs> Jason's grandparents, you know, retired to Florida and a lot of people retired down there. And now we have um, land in Maine and we spend most of our winters in Florida. So we just thought this quote spoke perfectly to us. I'd like to see how long an Aroostook County man can stand Florida. I do wonder if the stab of memory doesn't strike him high in the stomach, just below the ribs where it hurts. And in the humid ever summer, I dare his picturing mind not to go back to the shout of color, to the clean rasp of frosty air, to the smell of pine wood burning and the caressing warmth of kitchens. For how can one know color in perpetual green and what good is warmth without cold to give it sweetness? I mean, you can get a lot out of bookstores. <laughs> that was basically a mini museum in there just in the lobby. Next, we're gonna drive down the Pacific Coast Highway, which is Route 1 from Monterey to Big Sur. This is about a 25 mile drive and um, just a beautiful scenic coastal afternoon out. Now, we did see a sign that said the highway is closed south of Big Sur. I'm not sure why, but we'll just go as far as we can. Here we're crossing over the famous Bixby Bridge. This is the most iconic view of the Pacific Coast Highway here, this massive spanning bridge. And the water is so blue today, it's so gorgeous. Uh, right by the bridge there are masses of people and I don't even think we could get in there. But if you drive past the bridge up a little bit to a vista point that's way up high, you can get a good view.
stopping at Big Sur Station. This is a little tourist information place and there's some hiking here as well. Um, I was asking the guy inside about Route 1 south of here because we saw that sign up in Monterey that said the highway was closed. He said it's actually been closed starting 18 miles south of Big Sur. It's closed because of landslides. It's been closed for the past 15 months. He said it'll probably be closed for the next year. Um, and there was a poor man in there that asked if he could keep driving down Route 1 to Santa Barbara, and he's gonna have to go all the way back up to Monterey and then out probably down Route 5. Uh, so there is no way to currently drive the whole coast of Route 1 uh, down to the south. Well, we've driven as far as you can go down Route 1 today. Um, there was a couple people who were not so happy about this development back at the Tourist Information Center. Two people were trying to drive down uh, Route 1 to get to Southern California today and were unpleasantly surprised that the road was closed. Now, there have been plenty of signs between Monterey and here saying, that the road was closed south of Big Sur. Or but 30 miles before that spot. They didn't catch it. They didn't look at their Google Maps. It's clearly- Yeah, the map won't route you. Clear on Google Maps that you cannot drive through here. But one man was trying to get to Santa Barbara. Uh, he's gonna have to turn around and go back up to Monterey and then down a different highway. Another couple overheard me um, you know, filming my video about this and it came up to me afterwards and said, wait, did you just say that Route 1 is closed south of here? And I said, yeah. And she said, well, we're trying to get to Long Beach. D is there any other way that we can get down there? I said, nope, you gotta turn around and go back up to Monterey. They were not happy. So um, yeah, gotta plan your routes, guys. Maybe because we're RVers, we are hypersensitive to planning routes and making sure that the way we wanna go is open and valid and you know, all that stuff. And Including guess, reading flashing giant roadside I signs. Guess everybody doesn't do that. Plan your routes. <laughs> Now they're doing something down there. So what about all the people who live past the road close sign? Like we've been passing houses all the way along here. And by the way, Big Sur is not actually an incorporated town. It's an unincorporated area that doesn't have a firm boundary. And it's just kind of this coastal, I guess it's a, it's a coastal, you know, scenic region. area, yeah. region. Uh, but there are about 2,000 people who live in this region year round. And there are, you know, several houses that are along the coast. Of course, it's beautiful here, although it is very remote and it's far from any real towns. What did they describe them as in that article? That they were very uh, hardy or rugged? Or... said there were a few hard, 2,000 hardy people who could endure, endure the winters coastal of coastal Cal California. California. We thought was hilarious. We're, yeah, I think yeah, you have to suffer through like a four-day delivery time from Amazon, <laughs> from Amazon instead, instead of, of two. one or two. <laughs> but if there's any houses down there, maybe they let local traffic down there. But I don't know. I don't know what happened to those people. Stopping into the Big Sur Deli and Bakery for a little snack on the way on the way north. <laughs> We're coming into the town of Monterey now, and there was I found something on Google Maps when I just searched for things to do. That said Village of Fay, and it's just little fairy houses. And I didn't know if it says tourist attraction, but we got here, and it's just like in someone's yard. <laughs> so, but it's very very cute. I'm just gonna take a quick stroll here, and then we'll keep going.
very cute. So nice of these people to list this as an open attraction that anybody can come see. Our son-in-law recommended that we check out a Silomar uh, State Beach while we were here. And we didn't realize that this is a California State Beach. And as part of it, they have this conference center with a social hall and park lodge uh, that has a huge lobby in it, some billiards tables, a bookstore, and a little cafe. Um, so we were just walking around here. We just parked on the grounds of the conference center and there's a boardwalk down to the beach that we're gonna take now, beautiful area. So the Asilomar Conference Grounds were first built in 1913 by the Young Women's Christian Association, or the YWCA. This was their first official conference grounds. And in 1956, uh, the state of California bought it from them. And in 1987, it was turned into a national historical landmark because of all of the arts and crafts architecture here. All of these buildings are gorgeous. Um, and they were designed by an architect named Julia Morgan. So this is kind of a tribute to her architectural style. And that's why it was made into a national historical landmark. Our next stop in downtown Monterey here is Cannery Row. You've probably heard of this street. Actually, John Steinbeck wrote a book called Cannery Row about this street. It was established in the early 1900s as a fish cannery area. We're only one street from the ocean here. The fishing boats would go out early in the morning. They would bring in the halls and then the canneries would come to life and people would uh, come down here to work at the canneries and they specialized in canning sardines really big sardines, like nine to 11 inches long is what I read. Nowadays, it's just a tourist area. Of course, there's no canneries here anymore. It's turned into a shopping and restaurants, you know, beautiful old kind of street. But I wanted to come down here because in the novel Cannery Row, which I'm reading right now, most of the characters and places in that novel are based on real places and people that were here on Cannery Row in the early 1900s. The book was written in 1945 and the street actually wasn't named Cannery Road then. It was like Ocean View Drive or something. But the city of Monterey renamed it Cannery Row in the 1950s after the novel became so popular. So I wanted to come down here and see some places from the novel. There are so many authentic places here on Cannery Row that are featured in the novel. I'm so excited to be able to explore them. So we're gonna start at the end of the street near the Monterey Bay Aquarium. And the first building is this greenish looking mission style building. It used to be the Edith Restaurant back in the early 1900s, but it's featured in the novel as La Ida Cafe. 
Then right next to it is Wing Chong's Grocery. This was an actual grocery store that catered to the Cannery Row workers in the early 1900s and was run by a Chinese immigrant named Wan Yi. In the, uh, in the novel, it's run by a Li Chong. It's called Li Chong's Grocery. And then right across the street from the grocery store is the Pacific Biologics Laboratory. In the novel, it was called Doc's Lab, and it featured a character named Ed Ricketts. Well, Ed was a real-life, very good friend of John Steinbeck, who was a marine biologist who worked and lived out of this building. And in the back of the building, if you go around, you can see that the ocean comes right up to the back of here, and Ed would collect sea creatures from the ocean and study them and, you know, sell them. And he was a famous character here on Cannery Row, and he's also featured heavily in the novel. Also across the street from Doc's uh, laboratory is a little street called Eris Way, and they've set up three little cabins here that are representative of the housing that cannery workers would have lived in. So there was a lot of immigrants that lived and worked here in the canneries, and these are just some examples of all the different nationalities of people who came here to work. This mural is based on a 1935 photograph of these six men who were sitting on the docks waiting for the fishing boats to arrive for the beginning of their shift. A little farther down the street, we have Mackerel Jack's Trading Company. This building was actually a brothel and cafe back in the early 1900s run by a woman named Flora Woods. She was famous in this area, and she is portrayed in the novel as a character named Dora Flood, who runs the Black Flag Restaurant and Brothel. So she is a legendary character here, and we're going to see that she, there's a statue of her down the street a little farther. This statue in the middle of Cannery Row is a monument to not only the characters in the novel, but the real-life people who inspired them and some of the entrepreneurs who made Cannery Row into what it is today. You know, when the last of the canneries closed down here in 1973, there was a period of depression here and things kind of started to fall apart. And over the next few decades, there was a group of entrepreneurs who got together and revitalized the area into what it is today. So this is a monument to their hard work as well. Of course, we have John Steinbeck at the very top of the mountain. And then as you work your way down, here's Ed Ricketts, who is the doc, marine biologist, sitting at the bottom. Around the side is Flora Woods, or Dora Flood, um, the brothel owner and one of her girls sitting behind her. And then here's a Chinese fisherman worker, just representative of all the different immigrants that came here to work. That was so enlightening and amazing. I loved going down Cannery Row. I love that history stuff, especially when I'm reading the novel right now and now I can picture it all in my head. Well, there are a couple of other sites that we wanted to visit in Monterey, but it's getting kind of late now and we won't have time. Old Fisherman's Wharf and the San Carlos Cathedral. We're just gonna do drive-bys, but those look like fun places to visit if you have time. All right, that was a great day. I'm so excited that we got to come to Monterey, do the Pacific Coast Highway, see Cannery Row. We are going to drop into Trader Joe's and see if we can get something for dinner, and then we're going to call it a day. So tomorrow we're heading north to Sacramento. We'll see you there next time. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye, guys.